Hello and welcome back to Radio 2. I hope you've been listening to a lot of radio, as I always ask. Um, when you start listening to radio, please do me a favor and listen to community radio stations and commercial um, so that you can see the difference between the two. Also, if you are close to a campus radio station or a public broadcast radio station, please listen to those as well. So today we're going to continue with with radio technology. So today's the second lesson for radio technology. And we have quite a lot that we're covering today. So we're looking at the playout systems, the different types of playout systems. Then we're looking at the different types of music scheduling systems, um, followed by the newsroom of a radio station. So we'll take a list, we'll take a look at where the news is compiled, how it works, what the different, who all is involved with making the news and what it all entails. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And then after that, um, there's two activities that I need you to look at to complete. So I'll need you to look at activity 7A and 7B. But for now, if we start with the playout systems, So what is, a, what is a playout system? If I speak about the radio station's playout system, it's the central software component of a radio station's operations. So hardware, software. In essence, it's seen as the proverbial heart of the radio station. Um, what it is, is it's a digital software tool that's used by broadcasters to store, to record, and to play, to play out audio content. Almost all modern radio stations and podcasters make use of a digital playout system. Think about a playout system as a professional, more technical, and far more robust Windows media player or iTunes player. So these media players take all of the audio content on your computer and collate them for you in one space where you can design playlists and play the audio out uh, in the order of your choosing. A media player, for instance, Windows Media Player um, or the iTunes or the iTunes player, allows you to skip songs, move them around, and shuffle play with them. A playout system does the same thing, but only for a radio station. In essence, what it does is it gives the radio station access to all the radio content stored and scheduled um, in one system, and it allows the station to play out either randomly or sequenced audio through a broadcast desk or directly uh, to air in the desired order. So these playout systems um, can manage all types of audio, including music, imaging and identification audio, audio advertising, uh, public service announcements, news bites, pre-recorded content, box pops or recordings of comments from the public. These playout systems are really quite amazing once you start working with them and you see how intricate they are. The playout system is the final meeting point for all these audio pieces to be scheduled in a linear timeline ready for broadcast. So this is the last place it goes before it goes out on air. Most of the modern playout systems that you get today will allow radio stations to automate their product. In other words, no live radio presenter, producer or desk controller needs to be in the studio for the software to play out a particular scheduled playlist in the desired order. So every year there was an awards function that I used to go to, um, a radio awards function hosted by the radio station where I worked at the time. And obviously the idea would be that we would want the whole team there, so every single radio presenter. So what we did is we pre-recorded a couple of those shows. Um, we took their pre-recorded shows and put them on the playout system. Um, we just took it off, uh, we just put it on auto and the system literally played the music that was scheduled, um, then the clips that were scheduled from the presenters and the music, etc. on until um, the next presenters the following morning came into studio and put it up and took it off auto cue and ran the show again. This, this can be pre-programmed and set in motion by a live presenter or producer, as I just explained to you. So once done, the software will play the audio in order without assistance. So this is also how they use pre-packaged or pre-programmed audio. Um, so if some stations are 
if some stations don't have enough presenters, they can do the same thing. They can use a show that's already been broadcasted and recycle it, perhaps in the, I don't know, four to six in the morning slot. And then obviously the next presenter will come in once again. And so although interfaces and the functionality of playout systems differ, most good playout software can perform the following tasks, okay? So all of the ones that we will be talking about can do this. So the store all music and audio content on a server and make all content instantly available. Make it possible for audio to be played out manually or be set up for playback at any time. Allow the studio operator to edit audio on the layout system. Enable a search function to find audio to play out. Allow a few audio pieces to be played at the same time. That isn't necessarily always a good thing if you by accident press a button twice and you have two, um, two stings or jiggles playing at the same time. That's happened to me back in the day. Include a, include a pre-program assist function. So import music logs and imaging from music scheduling software systems. We're going to chat about music scheduling software systems a bit later and input audio advertising logs from advertising scheduling systems. So the traffic department would put together the advertising logs for the day, um, and then these, along with the music logs, will be collated and put on the playout systems to play for the following 24 hours. These functionalities are primarily used as follows. So music will be scheduled in a music scheduling software program and integrated into the playout system. Music software, most music software systems, most, most music software systems will also schedule imaging. Adverts are then programmed, scheduled, and integrated into the same log. The programming department can um, schedule talk breaks or links, news breaks, live reads, and other markets in the logs in order to plan the show. Presenters, controllers, or producers will then get a hard or a soft copy of these integrated logs so that they can prepare for their shows. Once the show is scheduled to start, the playout system will have the music, the advertising, and the talk breaks all lined up um, to the correct time market in sequence, ready to be played in order as per the log. During the show, audio content other than those already mentioned can be played through the other channels using quick fire functionalities. These quick fire functionalities are the ones that I mentioned that can play more than one uh, audio pieces at a time that can get you in trouble. In order to make all of these possibilities come live using the playout system, so from the beginning to end where it goes on air, the most systems will include an ecosystem of software programs and differing um, hardware. This ecosystem usually includes one main playout interface where presenters, controllers, or producers can play out music on various broadcast channels. So you can see this is quite a um, this is quite a nifty program. This software includes the following tools. So the ability to drag and drop audio, easy to queue sound queuing and pre-fade listening abilities, um, looping introductions, intro and outro counter and countdown displays, automatic audio linking into the next sequence piece of audio, editing options to edit, sequence, to edit sequences between linked audio pieces, Real-time views of playlists, including his the history of what has been played. Obviously, if you want to drag in songs, you need to see what has been played. Record, edit, and schedule audio. Run-in automation, semi-automation or manual modes. Quick players or immediate play buttons. The, ecos the ecosystem also includes a music scheduling software system, an advertising scheduling software system, an import wizard to import any third-party scheduling data, report generators to produce comprehensive reports of playout. So these reports for playout are needed to determine what actually went out on air and what was actually heard by the community. So when it comes to playout systems, there are currently thousands of different options on the market. The systems will also differ considerably um, with regards to what it can do and the price, obviously. If you ever want to buy a playout system, um, I'd recommend starting with making a list of everything that you is that you want this playout system to be able to do, and then make this list available to the providers. This just kind of helps you make sure that you're buying the, um, the correct playout system for your station and not wasting your money.
So even though there are thousands of different uh, playout systems to choose from, there are, there are a couple of more popular radio playout systems on the market, each with their own core features as reviewed by Anthony Eden in 2014. The ones we will be focusing on are RCS Zeta. Just an FYI, there was a, an older version of RCS, which a lot of the South African stations are still using. Web Orbit Solutions, BSI OpX, Zalet, and Genesis. Genesis is also one that's used by a lot of the South African stations. Another one that isn't on here, but one that I've used a lot in the past is called Simeon. So this is what RCS Zeta looks like if you open it up. The key features here would be that it offers various modes, namely full automation, live assistant manual. It combines multiple stations in one system. It makes use of a Microsoft SQL database. It employs a distributed system, which means that each workstation can act as a remote control for the machines responsible for the actual audio playout. It offers time stretching and time squeezing in order to hit time markers. It offers both automated and manual built-in recorders. It supports networked programming, such as file and log sharing over a wide area network, remote voice tracking, and split stations for local spot breaks. Its SIG features are fully automated, but also have manual control. It integrates closely with products from the same manufacturer, such as uh, G Selector and Aquira. Next, we have the Web Orbit solutions. So you'll see the interface is a little bit different um, than RCS Zeta. Major components here include a workstation, a web interface, a playout editor, a friendship server, and a remote voice tracking server. Um, within the workstation, there's a stack player, so a main station player, a playlist editor, a library, a voice tracker, an audio asset editor, and a music master widget. The system can be configured according to your preference by using the web interface, which also enables you to access your audio library from, in, from any location outside of the studio. In this specific program, the, the Adobe Edition plugin makes it easy to edit audio outside of the system and send it back. The BSI OpX, as you can see, it also looks very different to the previous two. The key features of this software includes it offers manual full, automate, full automation and live assist modes. Uh, you can set up multiple stations in one system. You can set up a distributed system where each workstation can remotely control the machines during the audio playout. It offers time stretching and time squeezing. It contains a built-in voice tracker recorder. The next one, again, quite different. This one is Dalit. The Dalit Playout System places a significant amount of value on media and media metadata storage. Key features here include it offers full automation and live assist modes. You can set up multiple stations in one system. It uses SQL database. It has built-in newsroom uh, functionality, and it is a built-in multi-tracker audio editor. And then Genesis, which as I've mentioned, is widely used in South Africa. Genesis is a more affordable playout system. And the Genesis key features are the audio board can be anything from an onboard sound card right, right to a professional digital audio board. The system can record and playback several sound formats. Um, Genesis can do individual hot mixing on the go or tight crossfades. The system is compatible with Adobe Audition Sound Editor and all supported compressions that can be imported into the editor. Genesis can bring audio from production to on air in seconds through the use of the audio import folder. The voice tracking uses audio level ribbons with as many points as you like. CD queuing and ripping CDs is built into the software. Um, Genesis can be arranged in multiple configurations and can be used as a touchscreen quick fire system or it can allocate and set up each play line to be a different radio station. Simulcasting and automated stations for digital audio broadcast or DAB and web broadcasting are made cost effective, which is awesome. 
Genesis can switch to satellite services and back automatically. And the log generator will import music and spots from almost all packages, including audio and logs from other systems. Then other systems you may come across within the South African market include, as I've mentioned, the RCS master control, which is the older RCS, um, EncoDAD, Sysys Dira, Radio Host, Radio DJ, and then I mentioned Simeon at the beginning of this. So from the playout system, we now move to the music scheduling systems. Music scheduling systems work together with playout software systems. They're used to schedule and then track what songs are played and in what order they are intended to be played. The most commonly used music scheduling software programs include G Selector, Music Master, and Power Gold. Originally, music playlisting was done manually using what was known as the index card method. All data from a song, so um, the title, the artist, the publisher, record label, etc., was written on small index cards, which were then separated into different categories. Uh, for example, a CHR radio station um, may have five music categories that it has called power, current, recurrent, power gold, and gold. Manually rotational clocks um, were designed and every hour had to contain a song or more than one song from certain categories. So back when there were still index cards, there were still physical CDs, uh, cards or even records that were collected from the music libraries and played out on air in order that was predefined by the clock. So if you think about it, um, the index card scheduling system hasn't changed that much. Today, today the music scheduling um, is done in pretty much the same way, except now the entire process is digitized and so much easier. And far more sophisticated rotations and restrictions can be programmed. In essence, music scheduling software programs are systems that store a collection of rules and restrictions. So that's what it comes down to, as well as, well as music rotation clocks for every hour of a radio station's broadcast based on the research-based policies. Remember that. Uh, these restrictions would then be applied and an exact and desirable music flow is created. <clears throat> Through this process, radio programmers can literally build their exact music flows, which can be tailor-made for their audiences. I remember back in the day when I started in radio, it was with CDs, luckily, not, uh, not vinyls, but we had to go and fetch the CDs out of the CD library and you had your stack um, if you were ready to go on air. And there was the odd occasion that one of these CDs would jump. Obviously, if it gets scratched, we all know what happens then. So I have to say the digital era makes things a lot, a lot easier. But to ensure the exact flow of a radio station's music, uh, radio station programming is based on certain policies and objectives of the station's management. These are usually designed based on research. Um, so exact category rotation must be followed. Certain songs should be restricted at certain times of the day. Good examples here would be songs with explicit content. Obviously, when there are small children or school children listening, these songs should not be playlisted or should not be playing rather. The tempos of the songs must be balanced. What this means is you don't want a high tempo song followed by a low tempo song. Um, so you want it all balanced out. Songs and artists separation rules must be enforced. So what this does is this prevents that we play two songs from, let's say, Mariah Carey back to back. Songs and artists of a similar kind must have enforced separation rules. This will present something like two female pop vocalists playing back to back. Song rotation rules must be enforced so that the songs do not play at similar times every day. Because what this would mean is that listeners who habitually listen to the radio station every day would feel like they're hearing the same songs over and over because they switch on their radios at the same time every day. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but you literally sit in your car and in your head, it feels like the station is just purely playing the same, whatever, 10 songs over and over. When in actual fact, it's not really, it's just about the way that the music scheduling has been done. 
These rules and restrictions are set in place to help create a certain overall sound for the station. However, the more rules that we have, the more difficult it is for the software program to schedule 24 hours of music without uh, breaking some of these rules. So normally when this happens, um, the software will let you know that some of the rules have been broken and you can then choose if you want to keep it as is uh, or whether you want to schedule the songs manually. This is normally um, where a good program manager comes in as they will manually check and adjust the music logs prior to the final approval and before it is being loaded for live playout. No matter how good a software program is, some glitches will still come in and there might be certain songs that have been put on that 24 hour rotation or 24 hour playlist rather that shouldn't be there. So the idea here is then that when the program managers, the program manager goes to review the log, this is something that they would pick up and they can intervene here and make the necessary changes in order to make sure that the music scheduled is appropriate um, for that specific hour of the day. So once the manual check is done, the log is closed and it's sent through to the playout system, which means that the playlist has now been generated, whether it's for 24 hours, whether it's for one show or for one hour. Paper logs are then printed and kept in studio so that the presenters can plan their show. It's important to remember that scheduling music is a skill and takes many years to perfect. It's not something you can just walk in and do. Okay, This is where research comes in again and understanding and knowing your audience and understanding who listens um, at which time of the day. A music scheduling system is designed to get the best possible playlist onto the air. Its purpose isn't always um, user interface and ease of use, but rather it aims to create the best music rotation output. Many of these programs might look and feel complicated to you, but it isn't really. Once you start working with it and realizing how the software works, you can perfect the use of the software quite easily. So now that we've had a look at the music scheduling policies or at music scheduling, um, we move on to the newsroom. For many radio stations, the newsroom is the most active and busy of their spaces. Um, it represents a continuous process of obtaining, writing, recording, uh, and dispatching information as quickly and as interestingly and as accurately as possible. The types of news coverage of a radio station can range from public to official news to professional, proactive generation of news to commercial-based news and entertainment. So there are quite a few different types of news that it can be. If we look at the breakdown of the different types of news, uh, public news is received through listeners who believe that their local radio station should know about the various community events that they're holding, or who are part of various um, societies' organizations. Official news then comes predominantly from government sources, such as the police, fire and medical services, public transport authorities, and various service organizations that are managed partially or completely through the government. Professional news involves the station's own reporters and correspondents who cover various beats or work as freelance stringers for the newsroom. They cover politics, crime, and other types of news using their established connection base. This type of news also includes various news agencies or news wires and third party services like the Associated Press. Commercial news, on the other hand, is news that is derived from businesses and public relations services and departments. This includes entertainment content. It's the newsroom's job to receive, sort, file, draft and create concise, uh, compelling news bulletins out of all this information. So the newsroom plays a vital role in ensuring the accuracy and reliability of the information that it receives. So unfortunately, what can happen is um, it can become tempting for a newsroom to rely on timely, well-worded press releases that are submitted by corporations or individuals coming forward with seeming, seemingly helpful and sometimes juicy pieces of information. However, there's a moral obligation of the radio newsroom to establish factuality in that information regardless of bulletin deadlines uh, that may be looming or constant pressure for break news. The other side of the newsroom um, would always be prepared for breaking news. So when we look at the structure of newsrooms, um, every newsroom will look a little bit different, just like every radio station will have a little bit of a different setup. 
In terms of similarities, however, all newsrooms have three distinct sections. So all of them have the reporter's desk, the bulletin desk, and the reader's booth. When we look at the reporter's desk, at some radio stations, the reporter's desk is labeled as the input section. This is where original news is sourced and written. So journalists would typically have their own workstation in the open plan office, while an editor on the reporter's desk is often um, placed among the journalists in this open plan office. This would obviously allow for ease of communication. So all the members of the reporter's desk will have access to the same news production software. Increasingly, currently, we're finding that radio reporters are using their smartphones for news production purposes. This means that they need to have special hardware um, on their phones for this, like for instance, iRig for iPhones um, or an Android version of it also. If we look at news production software in the reporter's desk, News Boss is a news production software suite that is favored by a few radio stations, while, uh, while other offerings include ENPS and Newsroom. All of these have a few basic features in common. However, the most important is that they're stable and that they won't easily break down. Imagine having your software crash um, just before you're going on air. No one wants that to happen to them. So at the end of the day, the same basic software just needs to be available to all newsroom journalists, whether they're copywriters, reporters, or editors. With regards to social media, these days, radio journalists also produce news stories on Twitter, Facebook, and other social media platforms. These platforms are also considered um, broadcast facilities because they reach many listeners, listeners or users in a short space of time and deliver rapid coverage. So here the reporter will file copy for radio using dedicated news production software and will then copy and paste elements of the news text to the radio station's designated social media feeds. If we look at the regulatory requirements, newsroom management requires that radio stations report to the authorities regarding the content of their news. Some news software programs allow for categorization of news items. Every radio journalist is expected to add sound bites to their news copy. Noise cancelling software is often essential as newsrooms are noisy places. Many newsrooms have relationships with counterparts in other countries or other parts of the country where an exchange of stories can take place. Some larger newsrooms have dedicated sound monitoring sections where journalists uh, monitor partner services and stations like BBC or CNN. Alongside the reporter section of the newsroom lies the bulletin section. This is sometimes referred to as the news output section, so input section and output section. And this is where the copy editors and news readers are located. Copy editors and newsreaders work closely together. The copy editor's role is to use the software to, once again, check the copy that has been filed by the radio reporter and examined earlier by the editor. Newsroom production software includes a system that tracks who has checked and contributed to copy. This is important in ensuring accountability for errors, as well as for acknowledging good performance. The final section of the newsroom is the reader's booth, where um, the presenter can then interact with the newsreader. However, in many cases, the newsreader will read from a soundproof booth and will read off the screen from the same software used by the reporters to generate the news. Often the newsreader may not have the rights to change the copy that has been cleared for, broad for the broadcast. All software allows for printing of bulletins as a backup in case of a dreaded power failure, which can happen, or a computer crash, um, or for backup purposes in studio. Okay, so that was a lot of information about a lot of different aspects of radio in one lecture. What I want you to do for me for homework is to go and read example 7a on page 263 in Next Level Radio. And then activity 7B, um, which is on page 265 and 266. Okay, question one, two, and three.